Hey guys, it's Tom with Watch and River. Thanks for joining me today. So the day has arrived. It's April 8th, the Great American Eclipse Day. And what does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> I, I know one thing for sure. With 100% certainty, we are 24 hours closer to the rapture than we were yesterday. But we'll talk about that. First, I want to go to scripture and then we'll get into all the stuff that's going on, okay? Let's go to Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Amen. Go to Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 7 and 8. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spread, which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. Amen. I love this one. It's so short and beautiful. Psalm 56, verse 3. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. That's a good one for today because a lot of people are, are afraid of this eclipse. I'm not, but a lot of people are. You just got to cling to Jesus with everything. Uh, Psalm 143, verse 8. Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning, for in you do I trust. Cause me to know the way in which I should walk, for I lift up my soul to you. Love that one. So a few more. Psalm 91, verses 1 and 2. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him. I will trust. I love that. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 26. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? I remember reading that when I was a young man, very young man. and Did that give me hope? That gave me so much hope. Let's do one more. Hebrews 13, verse 6. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? I love that. I love that. So it's here. It's, it's April 8th, the day of the great American eclipse. Is today the day of the rapture? Nope, I don't think it is. <laughs> I'm just, I've told you that all along. I'm not saying it couldn't happen today because it can happen any day and I'm not going to play God and say he can't rapture us today. Do I think the rapture is going to happen today? No, I, I don't. You know, I do think that this is a sign. I happen to believe that. I don't have proof of that. I don't have scriptures to back that up. So, you know, disclaimer, this is just a Tom thought, but when I see an X with two eclipses divided by seven years and it forms an X over the United States, I happen to probably think that's a sign of coming judgment to the United States. And we'll see what, what happens today. But here's the problem with, there's a lot of people that are saying the rapture is today. And, and, I, and I'm going to tell you right now, if you put your hope in April 8th, April 9th going to come. And what happens then is discouragement sets in. And I, I've, I've tried to say this in so many ways. And the Lord put this on my heart to talk about this and another subject I'll get to. But when you're putting your trust and your hope in Jesus, you're, you're putting your trust in the rock. Do you know what I mean? It's like when you put your trust in Jesus, that's what he wants. Like that, that's amazing. That's the only place we can really put our trust, not in the world or anything around here. But he's the rock. But you can't put your trust in a date. You, you can't do it. We're waiting for his timing and his timing is perfect. And we know all the signs are there. But if he doesn't come today or tomorrow, nothing has changed. We're in the last days. And that's, I'm going to do my storm analogy again, if you don't mind, because it does really speak to people. I just want you to picture, and you, most of you, have lived through a moment like this when when you're outside and you're going, oh, oh, there's a storm coming. And according to each area you live in, we all have different, you know, sometimes you guys are looking for tornado warnings. But I'm talking about here in Connecticut, like those days when we're about to get a really bad thunderstorm, lightning and a lot of rain. 
and I'll go outside. The clouds are dark. They're very dark. And I hear rumbling. And every half a minute or so, I hear the rumbling getting louder. And the air is thick with humidity. And you just sit there going, there is a storm coming. It is coming. It is going to rain. We're going to get lightning. We're going to get wind. And man, I feel it in the air. And I hear the rumbling. Now picture taking out your watch and guessing what minute that storm is going to come. Okay, so let's say you say, all right, six minutes from now, that storm is going to come and you sit there with a timer. All right. And all of a sudden you see the seventh minute, you know, the six minutes has passed. And now now you're at the seventh minute and you're like, oh, is this storm ever going to come? Of course, the rumbling's louder. The clouds are darker, you know, but it's it's coming. And that's that's exactly what I feel like when people will set dates is I feel like, well, the next day is going to come and people are going to be discouraged. But I want to say to them, wake up. Nothing's changed. All the signs are here. We're living in the last days. And I think a lot of people are going to wake up tomorrow discouraged. And I'm just going to want to say to them, the storm's still coming. You know, Jesus is coming to rapture his church, the people that have the indwelling Holy Spirit. And he's coming very, very soon. All the signs are there. We're waiting for it. We're waiting for it. So don't give up hope. All right. Now, something the Lord put on my heart. I don't want to, I don't want to do this one. Sometimes the Lord puts something on my heart. I'm like, oh no, I really don't want to do that. And I said that this morning and I kind of turned away and I was looking at news stuff and he just kept putting it in my heart. So, um, it's a hard conversation to have, but I, but I'm going to have it. And I've had this conversation, I think one other time, I think many people look at the rapture as if it's a rescue from their problems in life. Um, I think some people say, you know, I, I'm having these health issues and these financial issues. And, and I, and I really think they look at it like, come on, Lord, get me out of here. Rescue me from my problems. And I just, I want to remind you that Christians have had problems for 2000 years. Christians have had relationship problems and financial problems and health problems for 2,000 years. Jesus himself told us we would have persecution, tribulation. We were never promised a perfect life, okay? And I, I, I think about both of my parents right now. They're both with the Lord now, praise God. And But I think about their life. They, they were always poor to lower middle class you know, their entire lives. And they had health problems. You know, my mom, my poor mom got her, some of her toes cut off with diabetes late in her life. And my dad died of stomach cancer and really suffered in the end. And I, and I just think it's, I tend to think that Christians in these very last days, the ones who are waiting for the rapture, I think sometimes they're, they, they tend to Think of it as a rescue from their problems. And I, and I, and I, I just think there's a shift at the way that people look at the rapture. Now there's been a shift and I see it every day. I see it in the comments, Tom, I don't think I can hold on much longer. Why is he taking so long? And please, please don't misunderstand me when I say I'm not trying to belittle what you're going through because you know what? Physically, I feel like garbage 24 hours a day. I'm just being honest. I do. This Bartonella I have in Lyme disease, I'm tingly all the time. I never feel good. I never, I wake up in the morning and my first thought is I wish I could take a nap. I'm just being honest. I, I'm not complaining. You know, I'm not complaining. So, but what happened is when I got this, when you get a debilitating disease that affects you 24 hours a day, you get some serious empathy. <laughs> you really do. Suddenly someone limping into a Walmart, I'm looking at them like, oh, that poor person. Like before I just be like, oh, you know, terrible. But now you just get empathy when you go through this. So I don't want to make it sound like I'm belittling or condescending to anyone who is going through financial or relationship or health problems because it's hard. It's hard. But you know what? We trust in the Lord through these storms in our life. And he'll always walk us through the storms. And at the end is being with him. So it's a beautiful thing we have to look forward to. Now that's 
and, and we're heading to a wedding. You know, the day of the rapture, we're the bride of Christ. We're going to a wedding. You know, we're going to be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. And those days, we are, we are in the very, very last days. We've never seen what is going on in this world right now. So just hang on and trust in Jesus because he's coming to get us soon and we're going to be face to face with him. Don't get discouraged if today comes and goes and the rapture doesn't happen. Don't get so bogged down by life problems that you miss out on a relationship with Jesus because you're so rapture ready. And so, you know, Pastor Carey yesterday at church, I'm going to paraphrase. He said something amazing. He was going through Revelation. He was in chapter 12. And he said, some people, he goes, you have to have one foot in prophecy in your life and one foot here. So we're occupying. He said, because if you have both feet here, then you're never going to even think, you know, well, Jesus isn't going to come back for a hundred years. You know, you met those people when you have both feet in the world. But if you have both feet in prophecy and you're so rapture obsessed and Bible prophecy obsessed that you're not occupying, you're not living your life. You're not sharing Jesus with people. So he said, you have one foot in prophecy and one foot here occupied. I love that. That's what I try to do. I really do try to do that because I love Bible prophecy. You know that. But we're occupying until the perfect time that he comes to get us. Do I think that time is soon? You have no idea. Uh, yeah, it's very, very soon. It's very, very soon. All right. I hope I covered that okay. All right. So let's look at what's going on in the world today. Now, the great American eclipse, I can't. What else can I say about it? You know, it's kind of a wait and see thing. It looks like the, just about the entire path of it is clouds, you know. So yeah, I know here we're, you know, I'm a few hours from the direct line of the eclipse, but we're supposed to get like 85% coverage of the eclipse. And it's supposed, it's sunny right now. They're saying by two or three o'clock, it may get cloudy. And that's about the time, I think three or four o'clock it's, is when the eclipse is. But, um, you know, there's not much I can say about it. We'll see what goes on. I, I do think, I do think it's a sign of judgment coming to America. Does that mean today the judgment starts? I don't know. I don't know. All right. This is from the Times of Israel. IDF troops withdrawn from Han Yunus to prepare for the Rafah operation. This is huge news yesterday. And there's a lot of conflicting reports. Some people are saying, oh, Israel totally got out of Gaza. The war is over. Others are saying, no, no, no. They're just preparing for Rafah and don't worry about it. So I'm going to read some of the things and uh, let you guys decide. But here goes. Defense Minister Yoav Gallant says Israeli troops were drawn from the Khan Yunis area of southern Gaza to prepare the expected offensive in Rafah. The forces came out of Gaza and are preparing for their future missions. We saw examples of such missions in action at Shifa Hospital and also for the future mission in the Rafah area, he said, following an assessment at the IDF Southern Command. We will reach a situation where Hamas does not control the Gaza Strip and where it does not function as a military framework that poses a risk to the citizens of the state of Israel, he added. So there you go. There you go. He said they're pulling them out to prepare for Rafah. Um, this is from Israel Today. It says the war in Gaza, um, the chief of staff, Herzi Halevi, said the war in Gaza continues and we are far from stopping. Senior Hamas officials are still hiding. We will reach them sooner or later. We will not leave any Hamas brigades active in any part of the Gaza Strip. So that's what the chief of staff said. He also said, this is a long war with varying intensity. In some places, it seems that life has returned to normal. All the while, the soldiers are fighting heroically. The home front doesn't always feel this, but the soldiers' families feel it very deeply. This is not routine. We are in a multi-arena war. There is no reason for panic, but also no place for complacency. Yeah. They're, they're in a, they're, they're caught between a rock and a hard place. You know, we know that, but we also know the hand of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is on those people and on that nation. 
This is also from Israel today. Nearly all IDF troops have been pulled from southern Gaza. There was some degree of outcry over this today after, the, and this was yesterday, after which the IDF clarified that the forces had been withdrawn to rest and prepare for the coming assault on Rafah. Uh, then we've got, we always have to hear from Itamar Ben-Gavir. They always call him the hard right Israeli minister, and he threatens to topple Benjamin Netanyahu over the Rafah offensive. Here's what he said. The Israeli government is under growing international pressure not to launch its planned attack on Rafah, where there are about a million people who have fled there from other parts of Gaza. But Netanyahu is also facing calls from his own ministers not to bow to this pressure. Um, Itamar Ben-Gavir said on Monday, quote, if the prime minister decides to end the war without an extensive attack on Rafah in order to deal with Hamas, he will not have a mandate to continue serving as prime minister. So it's a mess over there today, like it oh, it is basically every day. But um, that's, that's what's going on there. This, this is fascinating to me. When you understand what's going on in the Middle East right now, Israel is waiting for Iran to retaliate to the attacks Israel did on the consulate last week and in Syria. So everyone, even in this country, like everyone's like waiting for what's Iran going to do to retaliate. All right. With all of this, here we go. Syrian President Bashar Assad has reportedly taken his entire family on vacation outside of his country, Syria. <laughs> This, there is speculation in both the Israeli and Arab press that this has something to do with a looming Iranian attack on Israel. Wouldn't you think if you were the president of a country in the middle of this, they're waiting for Iran to retaliate. Let's take a family vacation. Let's go to the Grand Canyon, kids. Here's some cotton candy. It's strange. It is strange. What does he know? I'm sure he knows a lot. This is from Israel today. Listen to this. Something is going on and the public is largely in the dark at the moment. Negotiators have left Cairo and Egypt is signaling success. Are we about to see a comprehensive hostage ceasefire deal? That's what the Biden administration wants. But how when Hamas is still demanding a full withdrawal of Israeli troops and to return and the return of the Palestinians to northern Gaza? Or is the sudden withdrawal of most IDF forces from Gaza a brief calm before the next storm. Now, Amir Sarfati said on this, he said a leader in Hamas said, the Hamas delegation left Cairo today to consult with the movement's leadership. There is no progress in the negotiations in Cairo and the Israeli delegation has not responded to any of Hamas's demands. So they're still talking ceasefire, but I, I can't see it ever happening. I can't see it happening. This is from Vaz. Under the Biden administration, Iran's mullahs enjoying green light to go nuclear. Iran's mullahs appear to have been handed an alarming green light to pursue their nuclear ambitions with impunity. The bleak reality is that time is rapidly running out for concerted action to stop Iran's march towards acquiring nuclear weapons capability. The Biden administration's response, however, has been marked by silence, massive funding of Iran, and a conspicuous absence of intervention. Yeah. I don't, you know, you hear this news, like, don't be troubled, because Jesus isn't troubled. If you belong to him, you have nothing to worry about. We're about to be face to face with him. If you don't know him, yeah, you should be panicked. Yep. Yep. But stay tuned, and I'll tell you how you can belong to Jesus and get eternal life and get your sins washed away. It's the most beautiful story I could ever tell you. That's coming up. All right. Severe storms packing large hail and tornadoes eye the south nearly every day this week. The total solar eclipse may be eclipsing weather news, but severe storms with very large hail, damaging wind gusts, and possible tornadoes will threaten the southern plains, the Gulf Coast, and other parts of the south nearly every day this week. The most dangerous threat could be the potential for overnight tornadoes. So, you know, we trust Jesus and we watch the weather and we try to stay as safe as we can. 
Dallas severe weather threat upgraded for Monday's total solar eclipse. This is interesting. The threat of an untimely severe weather event Monday covers a wide swath of Texas, just as millions hope to take in the spectacle of the last solar eclipse in the United States for more than a decade. There you go. Pray for the people. You know, I'm, I've been praying for the people all along the path of the eclipse with all the visitors and you know i just pray that everyone's safe and everything's cool and then we'll just trust jesus past 48 hours 107 earthquakes over 4.0 18 over 5.0 so we continue to be in a very active earthquake period right now and dutch since on youtube um has been saying it's going to continue like this week looks like it could be a big earthquake week, so we'll keep our eye on that. This is a, this story. This, I looked at this story and all I could think of is, man, if I heard this 20 years ago, I'd be like, what? But I hear it today. And still, when I, when I heard about this, and I heard about this a while ago, but it was like, we're in the last days. This is so demonic and strange. Listen to this. Psychoactive drug made from human bones that has seen addicts digging up graves to get high leads Sierra Leone, I think it's Sierra Leone or Sierra Leone, declaring a national emergency as zombie narcotic sweeps through West Africa, killing dozens a month. They have declared a national emergency over a psychoactive drug made from human bones. The country has witnessed a sharp spike in abuse of the drug Kush, K-U-S-H, forcing police officers to guard cemeteries in the capital of Freetown to stop young men from digging up skeletons to get high. Tell me we're not in the last days. That's just, that's not even clown world. That's just strange. That's just pray for the people there to find Jesus. Oh my goodness. Oh, flying the friendly skies segment. Southwest Airlines Boeing 737 makes emergency landing in Denver after the engine cowling detaches. The pilot reported the engine cowling fell off during takeoff and struck the wing flap. They have pictures and video and stuff. It's just incredible. I've never seen so many plane mishaps. It's every day. I didn't even tell you some of them I see. They're not that exciting. And some of them I see are like, yeah, that's probably happened. You know, but there's a lot of crazy stuff going on in the skies. Crazy. This is from CNN. Artificial intelligence could be as consequential to the economy as electricity, says Jamie Dimon. Jamie Dimon believes that artificial intelligence will have a huge impact on global business this year. Dimon, one of the world's most influential business leaders, said in his annual shareholder letter Monday that while he doesn't yet know the full effect AI will have on business, the economy, or society, he knows its influence will be significant. Quote, we are completely convinced the consequences will be extraordinary. Yeah, I bet they will and possibly as transformational as some of the major technological inventions of the past several hundred years. Think of the printing press, the steam engine, electricity, computing the internet, clown world, I added clown world. Among others, J.P. Morgan Chase CEO wrote in his letter, the AI explosion has already transformed workplaces across the world and nearly 40% of global employment could be disrupted by AI, according to the International Monetary Fund Industries. From medicine to finance to music, they've already felt its effects. That's the slow drum roll to clown world. Where is it? I, even, I think I even have a drum roll sound. Oh, uh, you can't hear that. Let's just stick with, let's stick with our tried and true. <laughs> clown, AI is clown world. It's the ringleader of clown world. You know, I really believe it's a huge part of the beast system. And I think the Antichrist is going to use it. And it's just come upon the world so fast, hasn't it? Like, I'd always hear about AI, artificial intelligence. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, robots, you know, 2023 was really when they unleashed it. And I can't believe how quickly it's being embraced. I can't believe 
how fast people are just putting it into action and trusting it while it hallucinates, <laughs> which is their nice word for it, lies. It's not good. We need to stick with Jesus. All right, let's go to, let's do a testimony of the day. Jerry, 30 years ago, I was at my lowest. Alcohol and drugs controlled my life. I attempted suicide three times, yet Jesus at the altar of my church removed my alcoholism immediately on November 21st, 1993, and I have never been the same. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I like that, Jerry. Thank you. Let's do another one. Colleen. Tom, I've been sticking with Jesus most of my life as long as I can remember. I never questioned it. No big fanfare or fireworks, just an assurance. I have sadly become lukewarm now and then over the years, but Jesus keeps calling. And lately, I can only talk about keeping our eyes on Jesus no matter the circumstances. I am over 60 now and cannot wait to meet my Redeemer. And I don't care who knows it nor what their opinions are. Jesus more than proved his worthiness by saving me. Thank you, Jesus. I love that, Colleen. Thank you. Doris, this is a comment of the day. There's a few comments today. Doris, this is a good one. I was pleading with my best friend to accept Jesus now because we are living in the last days. And why? She told me all these things have been going on that she doesn't believe what the Bible says and the reasons why. While she is mocking me, we had the earthquake. She couldn't believe it and she started to cry. God is so good. Wow, the timing on that one. Unbelievable. I hope she uh I hope she comes to know what Jesus did for her. I really do. Pat. Forgive me, Father. I have sinned and sinned many times. I acknowledge that your blood shed on the cross redeemed me. You are gracious. Thank you, Savior, our blessed hope. Thank you, Pat. I like that. Thank you. He is he's our only hope. Only hope. Jessica. I work as a teacher's aide and ride the bus. Friday, I got on the bus and the bus driver asked if I had heard about the earthquake in New Jersey. I had been telling her that earthquakes are going to get worse and now she's paying attention. So we were discussing the New Jersey earthquake and we pull up to our second stop and this guy walks up and asks us if we had heard about the earthquakes in New Jersey. And I said, yes, we were just discussing it. And he proceeded to say, all that stuff talked about in the Bible is starting. Mark my words. Now the school bus driver is really paying attention People know. Everyone sees it. Thank you, Jessica. I hope that bus driver comes to know the Lord. Yeah, a lot of people are, a lot of people are waking up and starting to see what's going on. And and you know what, man, the fields are ripe. The last harvest before this rapture, the fields are ripe. The more people see what's going on, and they get that fear, the more they seek God. Or you know, this is crazy. Is there a God? The fields are ripe and we just have to occupy till we're taken out of here. We have to share the gospel as much as we can. Karen, hi, Tom. No coincidence with the earthquake and the UN or that it was 4.8 and the eclipse is 4.8. Wow. It's time our country truly repents. Start with me, Lord. Please forgive me. Lead me and guide your children. Whatever is in front of us, we trust you completely. Amen. Let's do one more. Mary. The world is preparing for wars. Heaven is preparing for a wedding. The spirit and the bride say, come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. Amen, Mary. Yeah, we're preparing for a wedding. You know, it's, you almost feel guilty sometimes. You're like, oh my goodness, like there's a seven year tribulation coming. That's the worst time since mankind was created. And we're going to be in a, in a marriage and at the marriage supper of the Lamb with Jesus but I don't feel guilty. <laughs> I got to tell you, but it makes me really, it makes my heart break for those left behind that don't understand what's about to happen to this world because a darkness is coming to this world. Dark, dark days are coming to earth. Dark, dark days. But God, God did something 2000 years ago. It's the greatest event by far, the greatest love story ever God sent his only begotten son Jesus here and he, he sent him here to take care of the sin problem Jesus came here knowing 
he was going to bleed. He was going to shed blood to take care of the sin problem. Because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And Jesus did it willingly. He left a throne in heaven to come here and put on human flesh. Why would he do that? Why would he do it knowing it ended in his blood being shed? When he was in his body, in his bodily form, he was 100% God and 100% man simultaneously. He was fully God and fully man. But he knew it was ending with him shedding blood, his own blood. And he did it because he loves you. That's the only way, the only thing that makes sense. He loves you. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. And Jesus came here and he was perfect. He was perfect. He never sinned once because he had to be the perfect lamb of God. And he's perfect. He's been eternal. He's an eternal being. He's always been. Jesus is eternal, backwards, forwards, up, down. He's always been with the Father. And he left the Father's side to come here. To die for your sins, to pay for your sins with his blood. It's so miraculous what happened 2,000 years ago. After living this perfect life, they handed him over to the Roman guards. And they brutalized him and they nailed him to the cross. And he shed that blood. And that blood has the power to remove every sin that has ever been committed from everyone. Every sin. That's how powerful that blood is. That's why Jesus never goes up on the cross again. He doesn't have to. His blood was powerful enough to remove the entire sin problem. Even the sins you can't forgive yourself for were forgiven that day, once you put your faith in that blood, once you realize that blood is so powerful, it has the power to remove every sin from everyone that's ever been committed. Well, that means all of my sins. Okay, Jesus, I, I am a sinner and I know I need payment for these sins. So I'm going to believe, I'm going to have faith in that blood that it will wash me white as snow. And then when you believed in his finished work, that Jesus came here and went to the cross and died was placed in that tomb and he rose again. He was alive again on the third day. When you believe that and you have faith in the blood, you're saved. You're born again. God will put his Holy Spirit in you. You'll be rapture ready because the people who are going in the rapture are the people that have the Holy Spirit in them. So people will say to me, all the time, well, who's going in the rapture? Just like the super spiritual Christian? No, no. If you have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, you're born again. You belong to God. You will be taken in the rapture. If you don't have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, even if you sit in church seven days a week, if you don't have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, you're going to be left behind. That's the criteria. Do you have the indwelling Holy Spirit? Well, how do I get that? I just said it. You have faith that that blood will wash your sins white, wash your sins away and wash you white as snow, and you believe in Jesus' finished work on the cross, death, and the burial, and the resurrection. And once you believe that and say, yes, Jesus, I'm turning from unbelief to belief. I believe in you, putting my trust in you. You're saved. And that's when you get the Holy Spirit. You'll be sealed into the day of redemption. And the day of redemption is coming very soon. He'll never let you out of the palm of his hand. If you hear this message, I, I don't like talking about the flip side of this, but I do it almost every day because it's not being done enough in the churches, if at all. But if you hear this message, I just told you, guys, Jesus paid for your sins with his blood. He loves you. He wants to spend eternity with you. But if you hear that and say, no, I'm good. I don't need that. No, 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 no. I'm more good than bad. I'll take my chances on that. You will see Jesus on judgment day. I hope you have a change of heart before your last heartbeat, your last breath on earth. I hope you have a change of heart or before the rapture, but if you reject the payment for your sins, that precious blood, then you will face Jesus on judgment day with your sins still with you.
and he'll say, away from me, I never knew you. I can't imagine. I can't imagine hearing those words from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords when you're looking at him and you're seeing the wounds or the scars in his hands and you're like, this is the one who paid for my sins. And I said, nope, I don't want that payment. It's a free gift. We're saved by grace, an unearned gift from God through faith in Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross and that he rose again. We're saved by grace through faith. Don't give up this opportunity to spend eternity in the immediate family of God. And you're going to say, no, no, I don't need that. I, this is crazy. No, I'm just going to go live my life. At least research it. Okay? At least, I always say, if you don't believe in Jesus, you think he's a myth or a fairy tale, I just have one challenge. Get a hold of a Bible. Go to the book of John. And just say to Jesus before you start reading, Jesus, I don't believe in you. I don't even know why I'm saying this prayer. But if you are real, reveal yourself to me and then start reading it. I'm not guaranteeing you you're going to come to the Lord. But I'm going to say many people have come to the Lord by saying, I don't believe in you. If you are real, reveal yourself to me. Because Jesus said, if you seek my face, you will find it. So that's my challenge. But I'm going to shut the camera off now and I'm going to say a prayer for every person who watched this video and if we're not raptured today today would be a perfectly good day but I think too many people are looking for it <laughs> but if we're not God willing I will see you guys tomorrow all right stay safe today I love you guys